boy and girl are making out, right? When they hear over the radio that this lunatic killer's escaped from an insane asylum. That's not the way it goes. The boy goes for help, and the girl stays in the car, and she hears this, like, scratching sound. No, he's been decapitated. No, he was gutted with a hook. When you think of book-to-movie adaptations, I'm sure one of the bigger names that comes to mind is Stephen King. I'm gonna scare the hell out of you. We could run a show for years on his adaptations alone, but that would get stale and is also a bit too easy. The inaugural episode took a look at The Thing, and I'm sure a good amount of people knew that that was based on a novella rather than just the 1950s sci-fi classic. Today we're looking at a movie that jumped on the success of Scream and became a hit in its own right. What I didn't know was that I Know What You Did Last Summer was based on a book written over 20 years before the film premiered. Make sure nobody in a fisherman's coat is following you as we find out what the fuck happened to this adaptation. What are you waiting for, huh? I Know What You Did Last Summer is a 1997 slasher film written by Scream scribe Kevin Williamson. He actually wrote the screenplay before Scream came out but found no success with it. Of course, when Scream happened, reinvented the genre, and made a boatload of money, the film was optioned almost immediately by Columbia Pictures and came out a mere 10 months after Wes Craven's film. It was shot in 50 days total and had a who's who of 90s talent in front of the camera. Ryan Phillippe, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Freddie Prince Jr., and Sarah Michelle Gellar were the core four with a pre-Big Bang Theory Johnny Galecki, Bridget Wilson, and Anne Hesch rounding out the supporting cast. Heche would only appear in two scenes, but a crowded 1997 would elevate her already rising star power. This film, Wag the Dog, Volcano, and Donnie Brasco, would keep audiences seeing her all year long and led to more roles for years to come. Bridget Wilson had a hell of a run from the early 90s to the early 2000s with classics like Last Action Hero and Billy Madison. That Veronica Vaughn is one piece of ace but also underrated gems like House on Hunter Hill's remake and as Sonya Blade in the fun first Mortal Kombat film. Give it up, baby. I've studied all your moves. Yeah, I studied this! Yeah. 1997 was the year that Geller broke out with her start as Buffy the Vampire Slayer, as well as a turn in the other Williamson slasher of that year, Scream 2. While he has the least amount of screen time, the movie would also boost Freddie Prince Jr. to have a strong career in front of the camera before moving to voiceover work particularly in the Star Wars universe. Philippi had already appeared in a couple movies and TV shows before his turn as Barry, but like his co-stars, this would give him shots in bigger movies like Cruel Intentions and Studio 54. Hewitt was the biggest name in the group, with a music career already under her belt, and big shows like Party of Five and Kids Incorporated. Her big screen output and run on TV would continue steadily into the mid-2000s. Behind the camera was director Jim Gillespie, and unlike Wes Craven for Scream, Gillespie came and went as a director, with only a handful of theatrical releases after today's film, including a forgotten Sylvester Stallone thriller called I See You from 2002. I see you. You see this. Let's be honest though, the real star of this film is writer Kevin Williamson, who became a ridiculous success after Scream came out. He would write Scream 2, The Faculty, Cursed, and Scream 4 for the big screen, while also creating Dawson's Creek, the following, and the Scream TV series for the small screen. He adapted Vampire Diaries into the Juggernaut TV show, and his sole directorial effort was Teaching Mrs. Tingle, which he also wrote. In fact, Teaching Mrs. Tingle bears a lot of similarities to another Lois Duncan novel, Killing Mr. Griffin. I'm guessing Williamson was a fan. I Know What You Did Last Summer would make $125 million on its $17 million budget. While critics didn't much care for it and called it out for capitalizing off Scream's success, which is kind of funny when you remember that Williamson wrote both films and this film actually before Scream, it was a success nonetheless. I Know What You Did Last Summer was written by Lois Duncan and published in October of 1973. At less than 200 pages, it was written as a teen thriller, or what we call a YA novel now. How do you do, fellow kids? While I didn't know it was based on a book, viewers of a certain age were quite fond of it, and the movie adaptation made the novel a smash hit well after it was written. Duncan was an active writer for just under 70 years and wrote nonfiction, full on novels, poetry collections, had audiobooks, a few children's books, and even edited a couple of anthologies. She would drop out of college and had her first book published in 1958 under the pen name Lois Carey. That novel, Love Song for Joyce, would be the beginning of a long lasting career. 
While I know what you did last summer may be her most famous work, she stepped away from horror and thriller after her daughter was murdered in an unsolved mystery in 1989. She wrote a book called Who Killed My Daughter in 1992, and a sequel to that called One to the Wolves in 2013, but it would seem the killing in New Mexico was a sad random act of violence. In August of 2021, however, a suspect was apprehended on seemingly unrelated charges, but later confessed to the murder of Duncan's daughter as well as two other killings. Her family would receive justice and closure for the heinous crime, but sadly, Lois herself would pass away in 2016 and not live to see it herself. Other adaptations of her work would be the made-for-TV thriller Summer of Fear, which is actually an early Wes Craven film starring Linda Blair, as well as a handful released just after today's subject in the late 1990s. These include the Dennis Hopper-led Held for Ransom and I've Been Waiting for You with Sarah Chalk and Ben Foster. She was also the author of Kid's book Hotel for Dogs, which would get the adaptation treatment from Paramount starring Emma Roberts in 2009. Duncan would take the interesting road and revisit some of her novels to update them with the times. I Know What You Did Last Summer would have cell phones and updated clothing added, as well as having the Vietnam War change to the war in Iraq. While Duncan was happy and thankful that the movie reignited interest in her novel and made it a bestseller, she absolutely hated the film version and spoke out against it for the remainder of her life. She was not expecting a slasher film, but that's what was popular at the time. She would also lament that once a property is optioned, it's completely out of the writer's hands. Both film and novel revolve around a group of four friends who are involved in a terrible accident involving a car hitting a person, and both have those four friends trying to avoid blame and consequences for their actions. The characters have the same names in both mediums as Ray, Helen, Barry, and Julie are the four people involved in the initial accident. The plots of both are kicked off when Julie receives an anonymous note saying, I know what you did last summer, and she goes to warn her friends. In the book and the movie, Helen, Julie, Ray, and Barry are all warned with warning signs or minor pranks, and Barry is seriously injured by who they believe has written the note and knows what they did. Two of our main characters decide to investigate and visit the family home of the person they killed that night, and are greeted by the sister of the victim. She explains that the family went into disarray after the loss of their other child, and the two leave to pass on that information. Helen is chased by the killer, and in the end, it comes down to Ray and Julie versus the person who wrote the note. Well, that previous section was a little light, yeah? The book and the movie have the bare bones of similarities, like character names and overall plot device, but that's kinda it. Starting with what happens as the initial incident, the book is a hit and run of a young boy on a bike, and the group of friends actually call the police about 10 minutes after. Unfortunately, the boy dies on the way to the hospital. The movie sees the friends strike an adult man, and instead of calling the cops or just leaving him, they attempt to dispose of the body. As they attempt to do this, a friend of Julie named Max sees them, but nothing is said between the group. The movie group are all in the same grade level, but in the novel, Helen and Julie are a year younger and still in high school for the story. After Julie gets the note and tells the others, Barry confronts Max, who, you know, doesn't exist in the book, and Max is killed shortly thereafter. Barry is shot in the book, but run over by his own car in the film. Julie has guilt in the book enough to send flowers to the funeral of the boy they killed, and this is how the antagonist finds out it was their group. He tracks the order from the local florist and then follows Julie to Helen and puts two and two together. While Helen's sister is not exactly a kind person, to say the least, in the movie, she's briefly a suspect in the book, and we also see Helen's mother, father, and other siblings. When Julie goes to the home of the boy they ran over in the book, the family is so distraught and the sister explains what happened to them all afterwards. The movie version of the sister gives no insight as to what happened to the rest of the family, and is creepy as all heck, while only mentioning that a friend of the family has come to visit a couple times. Then there's a couple of huge differences between the mediums. First off is the violence depicted in both. The book only has one fatality, the hit and run that starts the whole story where the boy dies. The film kills off Max, Helen's sister, a cop, Barry, Helen, and then the main villain. Who the writer of the note and the stalker of the kids changes from page to screen as well. The movie killer ends up being the person they hit with the car in the beginning. His daughter was killed by the younger brother of Anne Heche, and he killed him before being struck by the car. The crew in the film assume it's the young man at first that they killed, but they learn it was the grieving father they almost killed that's after them. The book has a much better mystery behind it as well. The book in general is a much more sleek mystery thriller than the slasher film it became later. Julie in the book ends up dating a character named Bud after Ray goes away and has zero interest in getting back together with him. 
Helen has a new guy move into her complex named Collie Wilson as well. Now, not only are Bud and Collie the same person, but he's the older brother of the kid they inadvertently killed. Finally, the ending of the book involves Ray figuring things out after a call from Barry and rescuing Julie from strangulation by hitting Bud slash Collie with a flashlight. The two agree after that it's time to go to the police and admit their crimes. The movie sets up sequel bait after killing the hook-wielding bad guy. Julie goes back to college and finds another note, only to have someone crash out of the shower and attack her as we fade to a black screen. While there are a lot more minor differences between the two, these are the ones that make major changes between the source material and its film adaptation. The book is a well-written thriller that has been updated by the author and gets a re-release every time a new major adaptation comes out. It has a great mystery behind it and wasn't just a cash-in on other projects at the time. The film did well, but doesn't stand up next to Scream or even some of the other slashers that came out in the late 90s and early 2000s. It got a direct sequel called I Still Know What You Did Last Summer the next year. That one has a surprisingly fun supporting cast that includes John Hawks, Jack Black, and Jeffrey Combs, while also adding Brandy and Mackay Pfeiffer to the returning Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prince Jr. It's not great, and while it still made $84 million, it wasn't as much as the first one and cost quite a bit more. And what about the sequel? Huh? What the hell is with that fat white you're making? Oh, I want to kill that motherfucker. Too, man. There was a third film called I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer in 2006 that went straight to video. The less said about that one, the better. Amazon also picked up a show adaptation that just lasted one season in 2021. While the adaptations have more legs than the original novel, and thus the bigger legacy, the novel is a superior work and I highly recommend you give it a go. It's a quick read, and if you like it, Duncan has a ton of other books to look into. 